Hey, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'm so happy that you're here because in today's video, I am answering all of those frequently asked questions about St. Martin and Anguilla. So if you were planning a trip to these two islands very soon, sit back, relax. This video is definitely for you. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rizal, the Traveling Island Girl, and today's video promises to be a juicy one because I am answering all of those burning questions that you might have about St. Martin and Anguilla. If you're new here on my channel, thank you for clicking on this video and welcome. I hope you stick around. If you are into authentic Caribbean experiences from a local's perspective, then I suggest that you go ahead and click on that subscribe button because this is definitely your community. So a little while ago, I asked on all of my social media platforms, I asked the same question on YouTube, on Instagram, and on my Facebook. I asked you to submit one of your most burning questions about St. Martin and Anguilla. And oh my God, you guys went all on because I have now a whole list of questions that I need to answer today and I'm gonna try to go through them on a fast pace but not too fast so get ready and sit back because we got a list to go through I want to thank you also for submitting your question because without you this video would not have been possible okay so let's get into our first question shall we and this question is coming from Brian K and he wants to know the best ways to get around St. Martin and and where to party, especially if you want to get your drink on. I know, I see what you did there, Brian. You kind of like squeezed in three questions in one, but that's okay. We're going to answer them anyway. And how responsible of you to actually ask how you can drink responsibly on this island. All right. So first of all, let's answer your first, the first part of your question, which is the best way to get around. In my opinion, that is to rent a car. You have the freedom to drive around and explore the island to your heart's content. But if you are planning to drink, then definitely I suggest that you go with a taxi service. All right. So you can get into any taxis here on the island. Just make sure that they have taxi on the on their license plate or a taxi sign somewhere on the car. Because, you know, we do not have Uber here, but we have something called a gypsy, which is a wannabe Uber but illegally all right so this these are illegal taxis you do not want to get into any of these gypsy cars because they might rip you off all right i'm just going to tell you the way it is they might rip you off all right so let's get into the second part if you want to get your drink on and your party on on st martin definitely the right choice because st martin has a vibrant vibrant i tell you uh nightlife and for any person and for every age and speaking of age you might have noticed i'm getting like a little gray and i'm not exactly into that whole party atmosphere anymore like especially not like how i used to be in my 20s and 30s but I can tell you, right choice to come to St. Martin because there are so much to do. We have so many casinos. We have uh, a nightlife that is ah, out of this world. We have bars and nightclubs and uh, restaurants that kind of like turn into nightclubs at the end of the night. We got it all. So having said that, where can you get your party on? Then I would suggest Simpson Bay or Maho. These two areas are known on the Dutch side to have a very vibrant nightlife and you can get to party until the wee hours in the morning here, okay? So definitely Simpson Bay Strip or Maho area. So the second question comes from Mochi Boba and she also wants to know about transportation. She says, I'm traveling as a single mom and would not like to drive while on vacation. I feel you, I got you, I totally feel you. Um, all right, so the same thing applies to you as well, taxi. All right. So like I said, in before, I think I mentioned that before, right? Go in the description box. You will get a link to my favorite transportation company on the island. They're my friends. Mention my name so they know that I sent you. And uh, they are great. And you can use them for the entirety of your trip. In case you do not want to plan ahead and schedule your taxis from way before, then you can also use the same taxi that takes you from the airport to your hotel. You can ask them for their business card and keep that with you at all times. So that whenever you need a taxi, all you have to do is call them. If your phone service does not provide, or if your phone company does not provide a service here in the Caribbean or on the islands of St. Martin or Anguilla, which I can't 
imagine that it doesn't, then you can uh, ask either wherever you are, uh, whether it's the hotel or a restaurant or a bar, you can ask them to call a taxi for you or call that same taxi that you have grown accustomed to. It's a great way of getting around and kind of like have that safety in, you know, knowing that it's a person that you've already met before that is taking you around, right? Okay, question number three is coming from Robert K. And Robert wants to know, what is the typical weather like in May? So with this question, I think you're coming to visit us very soon in May, right? All right, just to answer your question in a simple way, and it's a little bit hard to do, and that's just because nothing has been as usual in the last few years. I don't know, I think it's probably climate change or whatever it is. Our weather has kind of like changed a little bit. Don't worry you're not may is definitely not our rainy season our rainy season is usually in uh august september so you don't need to worry about having said that however you know it will be sunny it will be nice it will definitely be hot it will be you can expect like temperatures about 85 degrees fahrenheit or 30 31 degrees celsius um and yeah so you can expect that, but please also expect sometimes a light shower here and there. Usually it does not rain the entire week. It doesn't rain on for days in May. You'll get a little bit of shower here and there. It might be a little gray and then it moves on. So don't worry about that. You're in good hands here in St. Martin. And yes, the weather is definitely going to be more than just pleasant. Question number four comes from Trini Mama, and she asks, what is there to do at night in Anguilla? Is there a thriving nightlife? I do not want to have any of my Anguilla friends come after me after I answer this question, because in my opinion, yes, there is, there is tons to do. But if you are expecting a thriving, vibrant nightlife like what St. Martin has, then you're going to be disappointed in Anguilla because Anguilla does not have a lot of clubs and all of that happening like St. Martin does. But Anguilla still has a very nice nightlife, in my opinion. There is always somebody playing live music somewhere. You can go to the dunes where the local celebrity, Banky Banks, always has something happening up to the late hours at night. You can also uh, follow his son Omari Banks one of my favorite local artists there in Anguilla that always every day of the week I think has some live music performance somewhere all right he has kind of like a steady schedule every night of the week so yeah when it comes to live music especially there's a lot to experience on Anguilla but Clubbing wise, not really. Something else to consider if you are into the nightlife in Anguilla, then you definitely want to head on to the Strip. The so-called Strip is located in downtown Anguilla, which is, of course, called the Valley. So when you're in the Valley, you're going to see this Strip uh, of road that is going to have a lot going on. There's a lot of music. There's food, grilling. There are people dancing, people getting their drinks on. There is so much happening, and it's a very fun way to actually experience the nightlife of Anguilla. All right, so we're going over to number five. Ramona wants to know, do you need a passport to go from Anguilla to St. Martin or to cross from Dutch side into French side and vice versa? I understand that for somebody who has never been on St. Martin, this is a legit question. But let me tell you, first of all, yes, you do need a passport when you are traveling between Anguilla and St. Martin. Why? It's international travel. It's two complete different islands. Anguilla is British. St. Martin, as you know, is half French, half Dutch. So yes, you are going to need your passport, all right? So your second question is, do you need your passport also between the Dutch and the French side? And the answer is simply no. We have an open border. That means that there is no checkpoints. There is nothing. You're probably going to be driving from one side into the other without even noticing that you've actually crossed the border. So just to recap, yes, Ramona, you're going to need your passport to, to travel between Anguilla and St. Martin. And no, you do not need your passport to cross from the Dutch side into the French side or vice versa. Cool Black One wants to know what is the authentic St. Martin cuisine like and where to find it? 
excellent question. There is so much when it comes to authentic cuisine here in St. Martin. There's actually a whole lot when it comes to eating on St. Martin period because we have so many, so many restaurants. And you know that St. Martin is known as the gourmet capital of the Caribbean. So you will not have any uh, scarcity when it comes to, to restaurants to choose from because there are so many and local restaurants as well. So first of all, let's answer that first part of your question about the traditional cuisine of St. Martin. There's a lot of seafood um, that you're gonna get in our cuisine. You're gonna get things like crab bag and crab and rice or conch boudin or conch uh, or blood uh, boudin. It's just like a, a blood, putting kind of sort of thing stuffed in a in a sausage of some sorts. Not my favorite thing, but apparently it's it's quite a delicacy. Um, there's also things like soups. We eat a lot of soups, like soup with dumplings in it. Dumplings are little flower balls that we throw into the water and it kind of like boils with the soup. Conch and dumpling, you're gonna get wilk soup. Wilks are little animals, little shell animals that grow on the rocks near, uh, near the shore. And you also have, uh, you know, fish soup, all sorts of soup, goat soup, which is another thing that's quite traditional to the islands. So so yes, you're going to get all of that. And now you want to know where to get it. And I, and I totally get you. You want to know exactly which restaurants to go to. And I can tell you, but at the same time, it's too many to, to, to mention. There are places in the Phillipsburg. There are places in Simpson Bay, especially on at the Lolo's in Simpson Bay. It's that area where you get like a lot of different restaurants, like together in like this little parking area. Um, you can find some authentic food there definitely go to Grand Cas. Grand Cas is known for it. Uh, there's a lot of Creole and local little spots there. There are places scattered all over the island. So it's just impossible for me to name all of them right now. But you'll be good by going to Marigo, Grand Cas, um, Phillipsburg, of course, and even Simpson Bay has a few spots that serve local cuisine. So the next question comes from Lovin0815 and he or she wants to know what are some great restaurant options in Simpson Bay? There are so many restaurants, hon. I don't know where to begin. I seriously don't know where to begin. There is everything from traditional cuisine all the way to Japanese, Lebanese, uh, Mexican, and um, and Italian. So there's there's so much. But if you want to know about my personal favorites, then you can go to the video right here because that video has my 10 favorite restaurants on the Dutch side. And there are definitely some of them that is on the Simpson Bay area or in the Simpson Bay area or on the Simpson Bay Strip. But what I can tell you is that there are going to be plenty of options to choose from. And my suggestion to you, just kind of like walk around the Strip and taste your way through it because there are so many and you are going to want to make your own list of favorites because my favorite may not be your favorite. So just hop along on Simpson Bay Strip and taste your way throughout the entire area. That's my suggestion. Next question is coming from Karen's Adventures and she wants to know, are there any calm beaches? I love this question, Karen. I really do. And that is because there is nothing I love more than what I call a beach that you can sip and soak in, right? And you can take your drink and you can kind of like just whew, hang around in that calm water. It's nothing better than that. So there are definitely some beaches that are known for their calmness. But I want you to know that most beaches are calm, but it depends on the time of year and it depends on the the weather conditions because most of the beaches can be calm but if weather is a little iffy or if it's the time of year when the weather times tends to strike up a little then yes definitely it's not going to be as calm as they usually are so beaches like orion bay uh, which are known as being a little bit more on the rough side can be very calm in the winter months and then you have beaches like uh mullet bay which usually are very calm but you you know, if the weather condition is different, it might still be sunny and perfect weather. Otherwise, it might there might be a current or something going on with the water and it might be a little rougher than usual with, you know, bigger waves. But if you want a beach that is usually very calm, then I suggest Great Bay. That is the one where Phillipsburg is located. Great Bay is usually tends to be very, very calm. Little Bay tends to be very calm always. Le Galion, which is another one, which is on the French side, is also quite calm. 
But again, don't let this make you shy away from the other also popular beaches because you're going to find one of them that is calm for sure. I mean, there's so many to choose from. We have 37 beaches after all. And then we go to my friend Untethered Jen, who asks, what's the best beach? Now this, where to begin? There are so many, right? And um, each beach has its specialty. Each beach has its special je ne sais quoi. And um, you're going to probably, when you get here, you're going to probably get to know which one is the best to you. My absolute favorite is Grand Cas. But if you go by popular opinion, then Mullet Bay, uh, Bay Rouge, Orient Bay, those are the three beaches that most people tend to mention when you ask them what is the best, the best beach. But really, it is all up to you. So when you get here, try to explore all of them and then come back and tell me which one is your favorite. The next question is coming from 01 underscore Caroline underscore 22. And she, I suppose it's she, wants to know things one should not miss if you have never been. And I suppose you're talking about St. Martin in this case. So let's just go with that. All right. So I have four first time visitors to St. Martin, by the way. I have made several videos with a lot of informative information that you should definitely know about before you get here. So when you're done with this video, when you're what, when you're done watching this video, definitely go to the description box and check out the link to this video right here, which is going to give you all of the information that I needed to share with you as a first time visitor. Now, St. Martin's got a lot going on. Yes, absolutely. One of the things you do not want to miss is definitely the border crossing because that is something so unique. We are the smallest landmass divided by two nations. So that on its own is super unique. You do not want to miss that. Uh, you definitely want to dine on both sides of the air of the island. Both the Dutch and the French side have amazing cuisine. These are things you do not want to miss. Uh, so you have to, have to, take it from me, have to spend your time make sure that you eat out every single night because there is there are so many restaurants that are just divine and you do not want to miss on that another thing that you should experience is one thing that st martin is so wildly popular for and that is the maho beach experience where the planes land right over your head and where a lot of people tend to want to do this jet blasting thing if I'm you, I wouldn't do that. It's not fun. I don't see the fun to hang at a fence and being jet blasted. It's also dangerous. And it is the reason why there are signs everywhere warning you of that danger. So please don't do it. But if you must go, it is still something that you want to experience. The planes landing right above your head is just so unique. So you definitely want to do that. Something else that you want to do while well, here is discover the underwater world. And we have some snorkeling parts in St. Martin that are absolutely gorgeous. And we have a new attraction, brand new, just opened in December. And that is the underwater museum. Now, this underwater museum has about 300 statues under the water and don't worry you do not need to be an experienced diver to get to them they it's in shallow water or shallow enough that you can just snorkel and see them from above and while you're there look out for me because i am one of those statues and take a picture and send it to me because i have not seen myself underwater yet you can book these snorkel trips with so many different uh, boating companies. There are so many, really just Google boating company or sailing or snorkel trips in Martin and you're going to get a list that is so long. Honey, you're not going to want to know where to start. If you want to know my personal favorite, go in the description box. I have left a link to my personal company that I like to go snorkeling or like to go sailing with. And one more thing is to enjoy the views. St. Martin has a lot of hills and there is there are so many beautiful beautiful views that you can enjoy that you're not going to see anywhere else in the world so yeah enjoy the views while you're here take time to really take it all in and don't only look at them through a camera lens okay or through your phone screen it's just 
put it down for a little bit and take it all in because St. Martin is gorgeous and you're going to definitely love it here. So yes, Caroline, there are so many different things that you can do here. And these are just some of the things that I suggest you do as a first time visitor. But if you want to know more, again, go to the description box. I have left a link to another video that I have that where I share my 15 must do activities when here. I think you're going to enjoy that video as well. On to the next question. And this one is coming from my friend in Aruba. Aruba Life Organics asks, are these islands safe, overcrowded, or pricey? Hmm. Again, St. Martin and Anguilla are so different. So, um, yeah, St. Martin tends to be very, yeah, I would say St. Martin's a little crowded. Yeah, definitely can get a little overcrowded, especially when we have more than two cruise ships in port. Um, and I think it's kind of like what Aruba is. From my experience in Aruba, especially when you're in that area of Palm Beach, it tends to be a little, you know, crowded, overcrowded. So yeah, St. Martin is kind of like that. Um, again, especially when we have more than two cruise ships in port. Uh, but Anguilla, on the other hand, is completely calm. It is so quiet. And you're probably going to think that Anguilla is super small because it feels like a very small community. There's not a lot of people around. There's definitely no traffic. It's just tranquil. I mean, the slogan for this island is tranquility wrapped in blue. So you can see where I'm heading with this, right? Anguilla is super quiet, definitely not overcrowded at all. But is it pricey? It depends what you call pricey. I don't want to call anything expensive because it really depends on your budget. But yes, in all seriousness, Anguilla tends to be a little pricier than St. Martin. So to recap, my friend there in Aruba, yes, these islands are safe, especially Anguilla. Anguilla is super safe. It's definitely not overcrowded. It can be a little pricey. St. Martin can get crowded. It can get busy. It can even get overcrowded, especially when there are more than two cruise ships in port. And it's relatively safe. All right. So I'm not going to tell you it's a safe haven. There's no crime happening there. Absolutely not. There's crime happening everywhere. Even Anguilla might have it here and there. But definitely, if you compare it with Anguilla, then yeah, we might have a little bit more crime here than Anguilla will ever experience. Zamfiradina, and I hope I'm pronouncing it okay, wants to know the best places to propose in Anguilla. What a fabulous question. I love this. I really do. All right. So as a frequent uh, visitor to Anguilla, I can tell you that you, know, you want to consider proposing on a beach. That is what Anguilla is known for. Anguilla has some of the most exotic looking stunning beaches that I've ever seen in my life. And they are known for these beautiful beaches. So you do not want to not do it on a beach. I propose you do it on one of the beautiful beaches and you get to choose which one you do it on when you get there. All right. So another tip I have for you is definitely uh, think of maybe doing it on a beach at sundown because there is nothing prettier and more romantic than a beautiful sunset with the, the sound of the beach and you know the waves lapping on the shore and you barefoot on you know with with sand between your toes there's nothing better than that right so i suggest the rendezvous bay for a beautiful sunset while you propose and another option is also that you can go to your resort and ask them to help you out with this one other thing that i suggest you do is the natural arch the natural arch is beautiful it's gorgeous um that and it to me, it is kind of like a nice background for a proposal too. It might be a little bit more rugged, um, but you know, it's it's beautiful. So that might be another spot to do this proposal. Um, one more is on a boat, one of those beach hopping ones or one of the sunset uh, little boat tours for that matter, and then propose on the boat. I am sure that the boat company is more than willing to help you out. And one more thing. Do not underestimate the local talent when it comes to photography and videography. So if you want to capture this special moment, then my friends at K-Sharp Media is definitely one of those that I would suggest you contact because they can get that whole thing on video or definitely a picture of it. So you do not want to not get in contact with K-Sharp Media. So shout out to my friends Kev there at K-Sharp. You guys are great. 
All right, the next question is coming from Coconut Queen, and she asks, are there any plant-based food options on both islands? And my question in short, yes, there are. Especially on St. Martin, I can tell you there are several places that are vegan, vegetarian, or uh, both. And um, my absolute favorite is, and I did a video on them, and I'm going to see if I can link that in the description, is the Eitel Shack or the Freedom Fighters Eitel Shack. Eitel Shack is definitely a total plant-based deliciousness. It is so good. And there are several other places where you can get strictly only plant-based. Um, and the good thing is that on both islands, there are restaurants that will cater to plant-based vegetarians um, or vegan uh, uh, dietary restrictions. All right. So there's always one or two options on most of the restaurant menus that will have something for you. So yes, do not be alarmed. You will be able to get plant-based food on both islands. JD Godwin wants to know my favorite casual bar lunch or dinner on St. Martin <laughs> and this is again there are so many to choose from oh where should I start I don't even know um my favorite bar hmm I don't really go bar hopping anymore so I can't really tell you which one is my favorite anymore and we do not have our own bar rusty rocket anymore or at least for this time it's closed so i can't even mention that because yeah you're gonna get here and the doors will be closed so that's not it hmm all right my favorite lunch spot because i love to be vegan one day <laughs> is the freedom fighter idol shack that i mentioned before freedom idol Oh my gosh, the food is so spectacular, even if it is strictly plant-based. It is so delicious. It's so yummy. Um, and there are several other lunch spots. Another one of my favorite is uh, K as in character. It's called K like character. And it's located on the Simpson Bay Beach. They are also a great spot for lunch. And then I have one other favorite, which is the Sunset Cafe, which is located on Petit Plage. Um, close to Grand Cas and Grand Cas as a whole is all has all the vibes for a lunch. Now I'm a fan, a big fan of the FLFL, which is a fudging long French lunch. Ah, oh, and there is, in my opinion, no better place to experience that than on the beach of Orient Bay. There are so many of the different uh, beach restaurants and bars on that strip. So yeah, definitely go there for a long French lunch. I love doing that. Feed in the sand and just eat all day. Oh, it's so good. With a, with a bottle of rosé next to it, absolutely delish. Okay, so when it comes to dinner, I have my favorite restaurants. And I've already said that I made two videos, actually. In fact, one with my 10 favorite restaurants on the Dutch side and one with my 10 favorite restaurants on the French side. And the next video I'm going to do is actually a redo of those two videos combined because my I've discovered new places. There are new places that have come online and there are places that no longer exist. So I want to do a recap or actually want to do a do over on that video. So you want to subscribe to this channel and come back when I got that one up. Okay. Liz takes pics and wants to know best place for a pedicure on St. Martin. Oh, what an excellent question. Don't you just love getting your hands and feet done and just being pampered like that? Mm, looking at my nails. I think I'm due for another manicure, by the way. All right. So my absolute favorite, oh, where to start? I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So it's very hard for me to just mention just one because there are so many places that I've gotten really great pedicures at. Oh yeah, Aquarius Spa. Aquarius Spa is located in the Atrium Resort. So you might want to check them out. Ask for John, my friend, and he might, and if you tell them that I sent you, you will get a discount. I'm going to leave all the details in the description box below. They always take such a good care of me, but believe me, there are so many places. Another really great place to get your feet done is my friend Diane there at Beauty Lounge on the French side. You might want to check her out as well. She gives very great service. All her services are amazing, by the way. I've also done my pedicures in, you know, the bigger resorts like La Samana, where also you'll get a good experience. So there are pedicure places everywhere. But if you want to know my two favorites, then Beauty Lounge and Aquarius Spa would be it.
So we are nearing the end of this video, but we're not quite there yet. And we still have two more questions to go. But before we dive into those two questions, I want to first remind you of my services and how I can help you get the most out of your vacation here on St. Martin or in Anguilla. So as you may know by now, and especially if you've watched my other videos, you might have heard me talk about my private island tours. And while this service is still something I offer today, I am retiring it very, very soon. Come June, this service will no longer be available. I just don't have the time to do island tours. And I am so sad about it because one thing that I really enjoy is meeting you and getting to spend a day driving around St. Martin and having a fun time together. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to retire the service come June just because of my hectic schedule. So if you are coming to St. Martin before June 2024, then this is your sign to get in touch with me and schedule yourself a private island tour with me. If not, I have two other services that are going to be equally as important for you, especially if you want somebody like myself who is local to tell you a little bit more about the ways that you can get to enjoy your vacation here in St. Martin or in Anguilla from a more authentically, more authentically Caribbean, more like a local and especially based on what you want to experience when you're here. First off is my consultation service. You can hop on a call with me and we're going to be face to face on a video call, just like kind of like you're experiencing right now, but I'm going to talk directly to you and we're, you're going to have, you're going to get the chance to ask me anything you want about your upcoming trip to the island. And I get to answer them based on what your preference is and what you are like as a person and what you want to get out of your vacation right so that is my number one that i would suggest you do and you can do that very easily i have left a link in the description box where you can just click on that get into my calendar and book yourself an hour-long video call with me next off is my concierge service in which you want to go a little bit more further and you want me to help you out with anything that you want to do here on the island and i can do a pre-concierge service for you which entails getting all of the reservations and bookings done um, you know restaurants activities I'll plan all of that lay out your complete itinerary day by day hour by hour and you get the chance to get to stay in contact with me via whatsapp while you're here on the island so those are the ways that I can help you and very very soon you are gonna get access to my ultimate e-guide to St. Martin and it's gonna have a little bit about on Anguilla in there as well so this is coming online very very soon and it's going to be available to purchase and this is just a PDF file with all of the information that I have shared in all of my videos up to now it's going to be in there including how to spend a day in Anguilla which is the next question we're about to answer and uh, of course all of my favorite beaches all of my favorite restaurants everything is going to be in this guide so you want to get your hands on that as well now let's move on to our next question and it's coming from Aaron Platt and this person wants to know the best way to spend a day trip on the island of Anguilla. Ah, by far my favorite question to answer because there is nothing so special as just jumping on a ferry and 30 minutes later you're on a complete different island with complete different people and a complete different environment i just love that for you aaron and you're just so totally gonna enjoy it it's one of my favorite pastimes i love to do that so going back to caroline which which is the person who asked you know things that one should experience while here for the first time that is another one of those things that I would suggest you do. Hop on a ferry, visit one of the nearby islands, whether it's Seba, St. Bart's or Anguilla. My absolute favorite, my happy place is Anguilla. So here is what I suggest you do for the day when you're there. Definitely rent yourself a car. Yes, I know it can be intimidating because they drive on the other side than what you're used to if you're coming from the U.S. or other places in the world to drive on the right, right? Will we drive, will we drive on the right? Yes, exactly. So um, it's different, yes, but don't let, let that keep you from renting a car. It is the best way to experience the island of Anguilla, in my opinion. You get to see so much more. You get to drive to your heart's content and go to the different beaches and go to the different spots on the island. You can choose where you want to eat and you're not, uh, you're not stuck with having to call a taxi or anything anything like that. So here's another thing that you need to know when it comes to transportation in uh, Anguilla. Yes, you have taxi services. You can even do an island tour with um, one of these taxi chauffeurs who are 
excellent in what they do, by the way. So that's another thing. If you don't want to drive, absolutely do not want to drive, then definitely go that route. All right. But if you don't mind driving, rent yourself a car. And if you want to upgrade that experience, rent yourself a Moog. Now, if you've never heard of a Moog before, that is these fun little vehicles right here. And in Anguilla, they come in all sorts of colors and you can get to choose from that. And so you need to rent a Moog when you're in Anguilla. That is like super fun. So something that you should definitely do when you're in Anguilla for the day is visit the beaches and visit as many as you can. I have my own regular beaches that I tend to go to whenever I get there for the day and I have my routine. So I'll go first to probably Shoal Bay East and then hit Meats Bay and then go to uh, maybe Monday for a little while, then go to other beaches. If you want to know my favorite, my top five favorite beaches in Anguilla, then go to this video right here. I have that in the description box. I have a link to it, a link to it so you can see it for yourself. But drive around, explore the beaches, explore some of the resorts, and then get yourself a lunch where you can sit. Where you get yourself to a place where you can sit with your feet in the sand. I tend to do all of the fun stuff in the beginning. Well, gosh, I'm going to, I mean, the whole trip is going to be fun, but I'm, I tend to do all of those stuff in the morning, you know, when I just arrive, which by the way, the first public ferry time is 9.30. You'll get there by 10.00. By the time you're on the road driving, it will be 10.30. So you're already close to lunch. I would do the beaches, like I said, do some of the beaches, then go to the arch. The natural arch is definitely something you want to see and drive around, take it all in, drive through the valley, which is the capital of Anguilla, visit some more beaches, and then you take a late lunch more towards 1 o'clock, 1.30. And my favorite place to get a lunch, an authentic, uh, you know, island lunch would be on the beach of sandy ground where you get a lot of options my absolute favorite is uh jono's for a fresh fish and fungi but you know besides jono's there are other restaurants on that beach as well that you can choose from so for more recommendations on beach restaurants in anguilla i've made a video on that as well yeah honey i've made videos about everything really but yeah that's uh you know the lunch you should leave lunch for the last bit and then get your yourself back to the ferry terminal before the last ferry because if you miss the last ferry then you're going to be stuck on the island and i can think of a worse place to get stuck in but it may not be part of your scheduled itinerary right you do not want to get stuck in anguilla especially if you're only on if you're visiting st martin for the day and you decided to visit anguilla for the day and then you're going to miss the boat so Get yourself on the ferry before last, which is at this time of recording is around 4.30. The last ferry is around 5.15, 5.30. So get yourself on that first to la or the one before last ferry. That's the one you want to get on. In case you miss it, then you still have the last ferry that you can get back to St. Martin on. All right. Time for the last question. And the last question is coming from Nancy, who wants to know, can you share the different options for visiting Anguilla besides the public ferry and what to do besides Shoal Bay when you get there for the day? Now, I think that I also, I've already answered, but if you want to know a little bit more in depth of all, all the other things you get can get to experience on Anguilla, then you can go to this video because, yeah, I've made a video on that as well. My top things to experience while there and you want to check out that video because it's going to give you a little bit more of insight on what to do when you are spending the day in Anguilla. But to answer your question about what other options you have besides the public ferry, the public ferry, by the way, leaves from Marigo on the French side because that's the shortest, uh, you know, straight line to Anguilla. Um, but you can also catch the private charter boats in on the Dutch side right across from the airport. And that is my favorite way of travel <laughs> i actually like it so much better because the boats are smaller they're faster and the service is so much better as well you know the public ferry is a public ferry so it's going to be busy but also the boats are older so it's a bit of a rolling thing and if you are prone to seasickness then that may not be for you one thing though if you are going with the private ferries it is definitely more costly it is not as inexpensive as the public ferry is so keep that in mind when you're going with one of the these companies that leave from the terminal on the dutch side
And that's it for this very, very long video. Definitely one of the longest that I have made to date. But I want to say thank you to all of you who have taken the time to send in your questions and thus making this video possible. And to you watching, thank you as well for taking the time to watch it in the first place. I'm sure you got a lot of great information out of this. But if you want more, don't forget to check out my other videos on St. Martin as well as on Anguilla because there is just so much much more information there in the about 70 or so videos that I have posted to date. If you want a more personalized assistance from me, then I can definitely give that to you if you book a video call with me so that I can answer all of your questions and help you plan an itinerary completely customized to you. And of course, to those who want a little bit more of a VIP service, then you can book the uh, concierge service in which I will take care of everything before you get here during and even after. <laughs> Okay, I hope that helps. And one more thing, my ultimate guide to St. Martin, it's going to be like over a hundred pages of information. All of the information that I have put so far in all of the videos and content that I have made about St. Martin will be in this um, PDF uh, book, you could say. Uh, so you can get your hands on that. It is coming out very, very soon. At the time of recording, um, it will be in about a week time that you'll be able to get your hands on it. So keep your eyes peeled on my website and of course here on YouTube where I'll be announcing it for sure. And for the ladies amongst us, I have great news because I am hosting the Island Awakening Luxury Retreat from June 4th until the 9th right here on St. Martin. There is even going to be a day that we're going to do a trip down to Anguilla to check out the beaches. Uh, so you would want to definitely be here for that. It is from June 4th until the 9th. So this is especially for those of you who have always wanted to visit St. Martin but never really had anybody to travel with or if you just need an escape because ladies we there is so much that we do you need a time to escape and time for yourself so if that is you and if you're feeling that this could be something that you want to attend definitely go to my website of course i have left a link in the description of this video for you again i want to thank you for watching this video my name is rizal the traveling island girl i'll be back with another video very very soon so stay tuned for that and that's all for me. Bye.